be able to go to Scripture itself. The passage that has been requested has been Psalm 23. Maybe you're familiar with that particular Scripture. And uh, if feel free just to join right in with me as I recite it and share it with you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. But thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to uh, take a look at the little uh, pamphlet that you were able to get maybe when you first came in. If you don't have one and you want one, there's plenty at the back on the way out as well. A beautiful beach scene was chosen for that. And I know, like you do, being from this area, you can go down to the beach on any given time, maybe see a sunrise just like that. On the west coast, it's going to be the sunset. But I want you to imagine, if you will, along the shore of that particular scene right there, the footprints that you many times can see along the shore. I want to share with you the reading of the footprints in the sand. One night a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes from his life, and for each scene he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonging to him and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints of the sand, and he noticed that at many times along the path of his life, there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and the saddest times of his life. And this really bothered him, and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I've noticed that during the most troublesome times of my life, there's only one set of footprints. I don't understand why. When I needed you most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, My precious, precious child, I love you, and I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. One of the very special privileges that we have today, and I know it's going to be a hardship on you, Marlene. Marlene, you um, you gave birth to uh, Shelly, as we know her, 35 years ago. And a very difficult decision had to be made. It is one that I always have tremendous respect for, for those who give a child an adoption, especially having been a parent of two that are adopted. Your gift to the Sparks family has meant so much through the years. And it is a tremendous honor that you have given not only to them, but that you're giving today, that you have traveled all the way from Alaska to be able to share words and reflection. And I'm going to ask you to come and do that now. so please bear with me. Um, first thing I want to say is, quote Job, Naked I come into this world, naked I leave. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Praise be in the name of the Lord. Okay. When I met Shelley, when we met when she was 18, and she found me, and I learned, you know, she's from Virginia, I call her my southern Eskimo. <laughs> and I, now I know it's hot here. <laughs> you know. And, you know, I'm a simple person. I'm not very well educated, and I don't know a lot of things. But one thing I do know is God does not make mistakes. Shelby was brought into this world for a reason. And um, I know she has taught me so much. Um, for one thing, she's the only child I have. So 
she gave me the miracle of birth, of having a child grow inside of me and giving birth to her. And then she taught me pain of letting go, the pain of letting this child that I carried for nine months let go. I had to let her go. Um, and not to worry, okay? Because I know I couldn't give her a good life. And I knew that whoever adopted her would give her a better life than I could have. And then joy. The joy of meeting her when she was 18, of, of being able to hug this child again. The joy of seeing my beautiful girl, and she was so beautiful, you know. And um, self-control. <laughs> self-control. There were times when I really wanted to take her and teach her some things, but I knew that I had to let some, you know, let her learn some mistakes on her own. Okay. But two of the most important things that she has taught me was forgiveness and to love unconditionally. Okay, No matter how much she upset me, no matter how much anger she showed me, it is said in John, his last commandment before Jesus died was to love each other as much as he loves us. And that's unconditional love. And it don't matter how much Shelly affected me, negative or anything, I had to love her. And I loved my daughter, Shelly. And she was always, always welcome back into my house, no matter what she did. And um, to the to um, her friends that showed up today, I want to read this poem for you guys. If tomorrow starts without me. If tomorrow starts without me, and I'm not there to see. If the sun should rise and find your eyes all filled with tears for me, I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today while thinking of the many things we didn't get to say. I know how much you care for me and how much I care for you. And each time that you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand and said my place was ready in heaven far above and that I had, I'd have to leave behind all those I dearly love. But as I turned to walk away, a tear fell from my eye. For all my life, I'd always thought I didn't want to die. I had so much to live for and so much yet to do. It seemed almost impossible that I was leaving you. I thought of all the love we shared and all the fun we had. If I could relive yesterday, I thought, just for a while, I'd say goodbye and hug you and maybe see you smile. But then I fully realized that this could never be, for emptiness and memories would take the place of me. And when I thought of worldly things that I'd miss come tomorrow, I thought of you. And when I did, my heart was filled with sorrow. But when I walked through heaven's gate, I felt so much at home when God looked down and smiled at me from his great golden throne. He said, this is eternity and all I've promised you. Today your life on earth is past, but here it starts anew. I promise no tomorrow, but today will always last. And since each day is the same, there's no longing for the past. But you have been so faithful, so trusting, so true, though there were times you did some things you knew you shouldn't do. And you have been forgiven, and now at last you're free. So won't you come and take my hand and share my life with me? So if tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're far apart. For every time you think of me, please know, I'm in your heart. Amen. Connie, this one's for you. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Technology just got shut off. Okay. And I want to make sure Father doesn't miss. Okay. 
For, for those who um, don't know what's taking place, this <coughs> service is also being uh, placed by FaceTime back to John Sparks, Shelly's father in Ohio, because he was not able to be here, the family there. And so they want to make sure that they're included in, in the service. Okay, is it ready? Okay. This one's for all parents. I'll lend you for a little time, a child of mine, he said, for you to love while she lives and mourn when she is dead. It may be six or seven years or 22 or three. But will you, till I call her back, take care of her for me? He'll bring his, she'll bring her charms to gladden you and shall her stay be brief. You'll have her loving memories of solace for your grief. I cannot promise she'll stay since from all earth return. But there are lessons taught down there I want this child to learn. I've looked the world wide over in my search for teachers true. And from the throngs that crowd life's lane, I have selected you. Now, now will you give her all your love nor think the labor vain, nor hate me when I come to call to take her back again. I fancy that I heard them say, Dear Lord, thy will be done. For all the joy thy child shall bring, the risk of grief we run. We'll shelter her with tenderness, we'll love her while we may. And for the happiness we've known, we'll forever grateful stay. But shall the angels call her much sooner than we plan, we'll brave the bitter grief that comes and try to understand. I'd like to say, uh, quote one more Bible verse, Isaiah 61, three, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the joy, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Yeah. And one more thing, let's see if I can say this. Bugra Banima Bini Gumkin. That's Chupik for goodbye, my daughter. I love you. Thank you. Arlene, you made a statement that you weren't highly educated, but I want to say to you that you're very wise. God bless you. Connie, come and share some things. I have nothing from my heart. Marlene gave me this picture. It is when Shelly went to meet her for the first time. And all her life, she never felt accepted. She didn't look like us. But she show, so looks like her mother. She does. This, will, this means so much to me, you just don't know. Amen. When I first called Marlene to see if she was Michelle's biological mother, she said, oh, she was so excited. And I thought, oh, God, thank you. Because I didn't know what she, if she didn't want to meet her, I didn't know what I was going to tell Shelly. Because Shelly just, at 18, I said, not till you're 18. I want to finish raising you and then it's okay. She said, oh, she sounds just like me. And I thought, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> because if anybody knew Shelly at 18, they know, oh, no. <laughs> but Marlene was proud proud of her daughter and happy that we had touched them back together. So Michelle went for a trip to meet her and they hit it off. She went up several more times with her husband and children and whatnot, so Marlene was always there for her. And there were times that we would talk and she would go, oh, Look how your daughter treats me. <laughs> it's like our daughter. <laughs> so we took her in and gave her all the love and support we could. There were times I didn't know how we were going to make it through. 
she wasn't had a difficult life until after her last child was born. Now, we adopted two of her children, and John Lee and Jenny. And when Jenny was born, she called me up two days after Jenny was born and said, hi, Grandma. And I thought, oh, no, because I didn't know she was pregnant. She said, we have a little girl, and we're going to put her up for adoption. And her name is Connie. Oh. Well, she'd already named John Lee, John Lee. So I thought, oh, no. I'll be on the plane. I flew down and brought her home. A little three pound, seven ounce little girl. And I said, you need to have your tubes tied. We tried. They did, wouldn't do it in the hospital, but we tried to set up an appointment. And it didn't happen. A couple years later, she gives me a call and says, I'm pregnant. I thought, oh no. Cause I am now 60, my husband is 65, and I thought, we can't take another one. And my daughter Lisa said, I know something. And Beth took him in. But she not only accepted Joshua, she accepted Shelly. She got her life straight. She made her get a job and be responsible. But she always opened her home to her and the love and the guidance. And as you can see, Joshua was just adorable. And I'm so happy she didn't get tied. But there was one more. Because without Beth, I do not think she would have turned her life around. And then came Eric. She said, oh.